<laughs> and you're wondering, what is wrong with me? What is happening? What do I need to remove this feeling? And then you get a tap on your shoulder, a tap. And when you finally turn around, who's behind you? The world. <laughs> the world! Right on your shoulder going, hi, hey, what's up? <clears throat> I don't know if we've met, but I'm the fucking world. And I just want to, uh, I want to let you know something. Um, <laughs> you're going to cry. <laughs> and you're like, thanks, world. It's so true. Amending Fences is about a lot of things. Specifically, it's about Twilight having to amend broken bonds with her friends in Canterlot, including a very bitter moon dancer. This is a subject I never thought would have been brought up again since it was mentioned first in the very first episode of the series. But boy, was it brought up again. The writing of this episode flowed very well, and actually is able to tie up a lot of loose ends. Moon Dancer is a great way for Twilight to look at her past self, as well as reflect on the what could have been. This episode has layers to it. If you don't get one lesson, then you'll find at least two more behind that one. Lesson 1. It's never too late to ask for forgiveness from a friend, or even be forgiven by one. Lesson two, even though friends come and go, there's always someone to help you. And lesson three, sometimes old friends can be just as strong as new friends. An episode like this is also dealing with a very sensitive topic, and that's abandonment. Although keep new friends but keep discord is a nice example of feeling abandoned by someone who is still there. Amending Fences deals with abandonment when some person or some pony is no longer there and you are somehow forgotten. This is something that I have been in the receiving end of and the giving end of. During my elementary school years, I had a large group of friends, but they quickly abandoned me when they heard that I was moving. Even someone I thought was my best friend left me in the cold. And then there was my best friend after I moved who I don't really talk to that much anymore. Sure, from time to time we talk to each other, but oftentimes it felt like she moved on without me. Toy Story 3 also deals with abandonment in a different way, having to move on with life, but I feel like this episode actually does that better. It's not just because of the fact that the abandee now has a way of saying what they feel, but rather because the abandoner is able to listen. So in a way, you're able to sympathize with both sides much more. Yes, Twilight did leave without saying goodbye, but it wasn't without good reason. Yes, Moon Dancer was heartbroken because she lost a very close friend of hers, but she still had others to help her along the way. The plot, or rather the exposition, tells us why we see Minuet, Lemon Heart, and Twinkle Shine in the background all the time, which I think is a clever way to fill up any holes in the beginning. Why is Lyra not here? Oh, she lives in Ponyville now. Why do we see you in Ponyville? Because we visit her and vice versa. Some of the dialogue does feel a bit fake at times with how cheerful all three of them are with anything, though other times you might also think, where are their filters in this episode? Seriously, almost every pony here seems to want to point out how bad of a friend Twilight was. Though this never hurt the episode overall, and even Twilight comments that she doesn't want to point out how bad of a friend she was, she wants retribution for the now. I also think that Pinkie Pie's appearance in this episode makes a lot of sense, seeing as the last episode was about how Pinkie Pie goes to such great lengths to plan the best parties. A lot of the interactions feel a little rehearsed rather than just off the cuff. However, we do have the habit of acting like that around others that we haven't seen in a long time, or we resort back to an old personality. People evolve. I mean, are you the same person in high school? Oh, hell no. I think you're gonna enjoy this. Not my girl, Michelle. You know it. She living. She living the only way she know how to. Lord. Oh, girl, you got to get your ring on up in there. I'm hoping my fat ass can hustle me up a vodka gator, right? Now, sissy that wow. 
This could explain why Minuet is acting so cheerful. Although, it could just be their personalities. Now, the only visual I really want to talk about in this episode is Moon Dancer, who just looks like a different color scheme version of Twilight, like Daring Do is to Rainbow Dash. This would bother me immensely after such a series of individualized background ponies in this season. However, while watching this episode, you'll find that this is actually a very good sense of symbolism. Instead of having to just face another pony, Twilight has to face herself, which is possibly more powerful than having some pony who just acts exactly like her and looks nothing like her. So her overall appearance doesn't bother me honestly, when put into this context. If put into any other context, this would be as lazy as putting Twilight's cutie mark on photo finish. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Even if you just look at the surface value and just see Twilight taking care of some loose ends, there's nothing wrong with any of it. The pacing is great, the visuals are nice, and the writing explains everything. To me, this is one of the golden boys of this season, and I can't wait for more. This has been your future evil of Lord Crimson Glow, and hey, CD? Yeah, it's me, Crimson. Just felt like talking to you, that's all. Thank you.